I am obsessed with this novel. Camp Damascus is a new American horror novel written by Chuck Tingle. And I'm still trying to process the fact that I think this is now my favorite horror novel. I only just finished reading it and things take time to settle and digest, so that might change, but I am truly amazed by how great this book is. And once again, this was written by Chuck Tingle. <laughs> If you don't know who Chuck Tingle is, I get it, I totally understand. I didn't know who he was until relatively recently. But Chuck Tingle is an author who has made a big name for himself. He's become very infamous across the internet for writing dozens, if not hundreds, of very strange works of gay erotica. But what's drawn so much attention to these works is the way that they're named and the concepts and ideas behind them. These are books about having sex with anthropomorphized monsters, dinosaurs, and even abstract concepts like time and money. I confess I haven't read any of them as of yet, but I'm really amazed by him as a person and the way that his mind works, and the fact that he goes into interviews and conventions wearing a pink mask. And written across that mask is just the phrase, love is real. Tingle claims to have traveled between dimensions, and the one thing that is constant across all timelines is love. Love is the only thing that is true and real in this world. Tingle believes in love above all else, and that bleeds into everything he does. Everything he creates is about love. He said in an interview about a year ago that his stories were fueled by the ridiculous hyperbole of conservative politicians saying, if we let two men get married, what's next? And so Chuck writes about what could be next and how the absurd sexual fantasies of conservatives, if real, would actually be more utopia than dystopia. He seems like a truly wonderful, kind, wholesome, sweet man, who values love above everything else, and who has written some really funny gay erotica. And now he's written one of the best horror novels of this century? <laughs> That's amazing to me. There are quotes celebrating this book from N.K. Jemisin, Sarah Gailey, and T. Kingfisher. All incredible authors who have read and loved this book. And it really is that good. But why? What makes Camp Damascus one of the best horror novels you will ever read? I think there are two major reasons. One is the themes and the topic being explored, and the other is the novel's structure and pacing. Camp Damascus is set in the modern day in a very rural part of Montana. In the Montana wilderness is a closed community of evangelical Christians called the Kingdom of the Pine. Since Tingle was actually born in Utah, this is probably drawing from Mormonism and also maybe the Jehovah's Witnesses. This is a cult-like sect of Christianity. And the thing that this community is proudest of is the titular Camp Damascus, which is the world's most successful gay conversion camp. Camp. They claim to have a 100% success rate of converting sinners back to normal people. Our protagonist is a teenage girl called Rose Darling. When the book begins, she's hanging out with some friends at a local lake. We quickly learn that Rose is a very clever person. Her mind is full of knowledge about books she's read. She clearly knows her stuff when it comes to literature, science, mathematics, and yet she tries to suppress all of that stuff and go, no, just Jesus, just Bible, just God stuff. There's a boy in her circle who has a massive crush on her. He does not keep that a secret, and he even tries to kiss her at the end of the first chapter. She goes home to her parents, and despite the fact that they are prudish Christians, they say to her, hey, he likes you, you should go for it, you should give in to your urges, follow your desire, definitely just do whatever you like with this boy, you're young and free, just go have some fun with this boy, don't hold back, it's fine, fine with us. Which is weird and out of character. Then, Rose vomits a host of mayflies all over the table, which is arguably even stranger. So now we've got a girl who keeps throwing up flies for some reason. Then, she starts to see a weird figure everywhere she goes, even at home. 
in her family's living room. This figure stands in the shadows and she sees a twisted grin on its face. It's wearing a red polo shirt for some reason that makes it look like a uniform. It's got a metal collar around its throat so tight that it's choking, and it has fingers about three times longer than the average human finger. It's a twisted, monstrous, creepy thing, and it seems to be following her around and only she can see it. She goes to talk to her therapist, and we learn very early on that this therapist doesn't have a medical degree. He's not a psychologist. He works at Camp Damascus, and he is their local community's go-to therapist. He's been appointed by this cult. And he tells Rose, no, it's fine, just just pray. You're gonna be okay. You're, you're seeing things. Don't worry about it. But very early in the novel, she's at a house party, and she sees this thing, this thing that she now considers to be a demon, and it actually manages to kill someone right in front of her. And it's really dark. And remember, she's also throwing up flies. Weird things are happening to Rose, and to say much more would be to spoil where this book goes, but this is the first and most important thing about why this is such an incredible horror novel, is the pacing and structure. This book has a very solid three-act structure. It is 300 pages long, and each of those 100-page sections is a very well-contained act. In that way, it feels like watching a movie. Most Hollywood films have a very distinct three-act structure, and this follows that as well. And the first act, the first hundred pages, is just wall-to-wall -wall terror. The creature that I've described, the vomiting mayflies, and a few other things I don't want to spoil, are truly horrifying. I was really shaken. And that's an important thing for me when it comes to horror, because I'm not easily scared. I read and watch and play a lot of horror, and any horror fan will tell you that you do kind of become desensitized. You get to anticipate jump scares and how they'll play out, you see some really twisted, gnarly, horrible, hellish stuff, and it stops phasing you after a while. But I was really shaken by some of the imagery, by the atmosphere, by the way that the lines are delivered, the sudden shocks, the sudden revelations. It's all in Tingle's descriptive language. It's really, really terrifying. Like, I was frozen, stiff by some of the things that are described in this first act. And then in the book's second act, we're into revelations. Things start to make sense. Rose's life comes into focus. There are reveals, and the themes of the book also become clear. This is undeniably a queer novel. It's written by a man who writes gay erotica, of course it's queer, and it's about a gay conversion camp. Despite how obviously queer it is, I also don't want to go into the details of the queerness, but you know what a horror novel about a gay conversion camp in a sect of evangelical Christians is gonna be. You know what themes Tingle is going to be exploring. It's very obvious that this is going to be a book about how indoctrination is wrong, actually, and conversion therapy is evil, actually, and the consequences of it, and how love is just love, and people are free to love whomever they want consensually. And that's okay, actually. The queer themes are on the nose just from reading the blurb. You know what he's getting at. But it's the way that those themes come to light within the narrative. The way that the themes are stitched into Rose as a character, her journey, her revelations, her discoveries about herself and her community and her friends and all of these secrets that get unveiled. And one nice touch that I will just give away is the fact that Rose is autistic, and she comes to realize that within the second act as well. Then the third act, again, without spoiling anything, is completely action-packed. This really follows the formula of a Hollywood film. There is intense action all the way through the third act. It is a complete, joyous thrill ride, and I loved it. I was frantically turning the page. This is a very heavy metal novel, and one of the characters that you meet later on is also a metalhead, and that's kind of almost over-egging the pudding, but I don't care. The first act is terrifying. The second act, less so. More about the themes, more about the revelations, and then the third act is completely action-packed. I recently re-watched the film It Follows, and that has a similar structure. The first act of that film is really, really creepy and terrifying, and then you get to understand what they're up against, and then the third act is kind of action-packed. Similar stuff. So this isn't scary all the way through, because it's about confronting our demons, really literally. It's about being frightened, it's about being wrong-footed and vulnerable, 
and eventually coming to understand what you're up against and trying your best to fight back against it, stand tall in front of it, face it head on, overcome it and defeat it. And the structure of it is what allows it to work so well. So you won't be afraid all the way through, but you will be really, really afraid for the first hundred pages, or at least I was. Rose is such a charming, endearing and lovable protagonist as well. Someone who reveals very early on that she's wonderfully intelligent and brilliantly curious. And this is something I wanna dwell on for a second, is her curiosity. Because I often think that curiosity has so much to answer for and we cannot decide how curious we are. I'm not a geneticist or an evolutionary biologist. I don't exactly know how things are passed on. I don't know if we are born with an innate sense of curiosity, but it's undeniable that some people are a lot more curious than others. People who exhibit curiosity often become very creative people, artists of some sort, or they become scientists looking for answers, or they become teachers who want to help other people find answers and encourage their curiosity. And I'm saying all of this as someone who is very, very curious. That's part of the reason I read so much. It's why I've traveled the world. I like learning things. I like meeting people. I like broadening my horizons. Curiosity and creativity fuel everything I do, everything I think. And the same goes for Rose. But Rose was born in a religious cult that is home to a gay conversion camp. Everything about her community, her family, her church is all antithetical to curiosity. Do not think, do not be curious, do not wonder, follow the rules, and if it turns out that there's something wrong with you, we will fix that. We will make you right, we will make you obedient, etc, etc. But Rose is queer and curious, and her queerness and her curiosity cannot be quelled. And I related to that so strongly. I come from a family and a community that doesn't know the meaning of curiosity. I'm the only member of my family to leave my hometown, let alone travel the world. I'm the only person in my family or community who even reads. My curiosity has been unquenchable my entire life. And I hope it has made me an intelligent person. I don't know, that's not for me to say. I hope it's made me kind and empathetic and creative, I hope. It certainly is the case for Rose. And while I didn't grow up in a religious cult, I certainly grew up in a rural place that didn't value creativity or curiosity. But those things existed in me anyway, and they led me to who and what I am. And the same goes for Rose. And that's what I loved so much about her. I related so strongly to this character, a neurodiverse queer person raised in an oppressive environment. I am astonished by this book, a truly twisted, terrifying horror story when it wants to be, but also a thematically dense, exciting, action-packed romp when it wants to be. The feeling of reading a book that almost emulates an action film or a horror film and feels distinctly cinematic is a unique talent that Chuck Tingle definitely has. I've experienced it reading fantasy books, science fiction books, sometimes horror books, and I like it books that feel like films. Not every book you read feels like a movie playing in your head, but some do. And it's all down to the tone and the pacing and the language. And Chuck Tingle manages all of that so deftly. And then there's the fact that this is an anti-religious, anti-cult book about love winning out above all else with a protagonist who is intensely curious, creative, passionate, and full of love. It's beautiful but it's also disgusting, creepy, and terrifying. Tingle proves you can have all of that. So much love, so much beauty, so much terror, all wound up together to make one of the best novels I've ever read, and I am not exaggerating. I am now obsessed with Camp Damascus, and I'm so grateful to Chuck Tingle for this book. Please, please check it out. Whether you're a horror fan or not, whether you're queer or not, I don't care. Feel the love from this book, and subscribe for books.